charisma in general is such an emotional thing that I think people don't expect. Uh, people find like who they are and things they actually care about. And they're able to bring that out in a really easy way, which is crazy. Um... What's up, everyone? This is Sahil here and welcome to The Sahil Sagal Show, where I'm going to be interviewing some crazy entrepreneurs out there who started from scratch with no experience, resources and connections, and then later on became unstoppable and dominating figures in their respective businesses. We're going to dive deep into the mindset of these super successful entrepreneurs to find out how they did it and how you can model it too. It's time to pick their brains and uncover all the strategies and tactics which these entrepreneurs use to scale their businesses from nowhere to multiple six, seven, and eight figures. Welcome to The Sahil Sagal Show. What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Sahil Sagal Show, where we interview some unstoppable entrepreneurs who are dominating figures in their businesses. Sahil here, back again with an awesome, insane guest this time. We got a Hollywood star in the room for you today. Now, she started performing professionally when she was eight as a singer, performing for audiences of tens of thousands of people, and as an actress in several feature films, including Disney's High School Musical 2, She's the founder of Charisma Hacking, and with her framework of Charisma Hacking, clients have increased YouTube videos watch times up to by 242 percentage, tripled their revenue, 20 times their Facebook ad click-through rate, and more than anything else, finally were able to connect with their audience in a more meaningful way. Without any further ado, let's welcome McCall Jones to our show today. Hi, friend. Hey. Welcome, I'm McCall. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure and honor to have you. Glad to see you after FHL now. It's been I know. Years. I know. I feel like it's been so long. Exactly. We are excited for another FHL and I'm super pumped. Congratulations to you, first of all. You second time speaker on that. I'm Thank more excited you. to see you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Second time speaking. I'm very excited. It's going to be so fun. Cool. Let's do it. We're going to talk some more. We're going to take some more gold nuggets out of you being on stage and all that. We'll be talking about so for people who are living under the rock and don't know about you yet, <laughs> let's talk about that. So what brought McCall into this entrepreneurial journey? How did you get started? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I grew up as a performer. You said this in some of my intro, but I grew up as a performer. And then I taught voice lessons and acting lessons and performance lessons uh, for several years. And then Funnel Hacking Live 2020, I went uh, to support my sister-in-law, Catherine, who was speaking. And at that conference, I met this woman who was having trouble with her webinar. And she just said it wasn't converting. Nobody was clicking on her ads. And I, I kind of looked around and said like, hey, I, I know how to make people more themselves and less awkward. And I took a look at her webinar and I just said, hey, I think I can help. And we 20 x her click through rate on her Facebook ads and we doubled her uh, conversion rate. And I realized that it worked. <laughs> I realized that it worked. And so over the years, uh, me and my husband, who's also my co-founder, uh, have created this system that makes you yourself. And the cool thing is that when you are yourself or what we call in your charisma styles, then crazy things happen to watch time numbers and engagement rate numbers and conversion rate, which has been really fun. That's so awesome. That's the transformation that you're bringing for people like this. No more, no more best feeling, you know, other than that thing. So oh, this... Boy. Charisma hacking concept, like I want to know the more backstory of it. How and when sure. was this concept born? Yeah, so um, so at Funnel Hacking Live, it was interesting. I So Russell gets on stage and he says, you know, if you have something that's going to change people's lives, it's your moral responsibility to give it to them. And I start my business that night. Like there was there was no delay. I started my business that night. And uh, I really, I, I started with one-on-one -on -one coaching um, because to be completely honest, I didn't, I didn't start the business thinking like, I'm going to double revenue for people. The thing that I thought that I was actually really good at with, you know, my performance coaching was making people more themselves and making people more likable and making people uh, feel more confident and things like that. So that's what I started to do uh, just with this one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, it was very intuitive. And with each person, I felt like um, it was an individual thing. Like no two people were the same. And uh, I went from one-on-one -on -one coaching to group coaching. And what I found is if I coached everybody in the group the same, then only some of them would improve because only some of them needed certain tactics versus others. 
And so as I was, as I was coaching a whole bunch of different people, we started, uh, well, honestly, it was my husband. He was sitting in the other room and he listened to me coach several different people back to back. And he said, why did you do that? Why did you just coach these two people opposite? For one, you told that they needed to be more direct. And for the other one, you said like, you're trying to be way too aggressive. Like you need to stop doing that. And I said, well, it was obvious. It was obvious. Like they needed different things. And he's like, that was not obvious. I'm going to listen to this. So he listened to my calls for the next several weeks. And he realized that there were patterns in what I was saying and how I was coaching people to get these results. And so we took all of the data that I had, uh, thousands and thousands of data points, and we put it into um, these algorithms that my husband developed and found. And we created this system called Charisma Styles, which instead mm -hmm. of somebody like having to find their voice or, you know, go through tons and tons of of trial and error of seeing like what made them themselves, uh, we found out that there are there are three specific different styles that you have and the combination, there's 54 different combinations and it, it basically gives you your voice. It shows you like, oh, this is how you are when you're with your very favorite people. Here's how you best communicate with people. And so people can really like zero in on the things that are gonna work for them specifically. So like I said, it's called Charisma Styles. Um, it's mm -hmm. It's based in data and all of the science as well as all of the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I did. And now we use it for everything. Now we use it for everything. And that's what I'm talking about at Funnel Hacking Live this year too. Wow, that's exciting. That's an interesting way how you guys looked at it. Yeah. So, okay, as a coach, I'm trying to understand this thing. So you're doing now one-on-one -on -one coaching basically, or is it in the group format? Great, great question. So I now, so now that we have Charisma Styles, I because I tell people what their individual styles are now, mm -hmm. it can be in any format, right? So we are mm -hmm. doing big events now where uh, we're helping people find their styles and learn how to use them and things like that. Um, because we systemized it in the way that we did now, mm -hmm. it is not every single person isn't different, um, but they, they may be different from each other. So there mm -hmm. are three, there are three like styles of authority and you're only one of them. And what we found is that when you use one that is not who you are naturally, then uh, audiences see you as either aggressive or they see you as like more of a beginner than you really are, right? So like one of them's right for the other sabotage you. And then there's one or there's three different styles of compassion. And when you use mm -hmm. the right one, then people see you as like someone who can solve their problems and someone who cares about them. And when you use the wrong one, just the one that you aren't, then people see you as like condescending or uh, mm -hmm. like aloof, like you don't care about, about what you're saying to them. And then there's six different styles of entertainment. And when you're using your correct entertainment style, then people see you as likable and fun and energetic and awesome. And when you use the wrong entertainment style, right, one of the other ones, uh, then people see you as like awkward or cringy or uh, like you're trying too hard or like all of these different things, like you're arrogant. Um, so when people use the right ones, then great things happen. When they use the wrong ones, bad things happen. So if we just teach each of those styles and then you know which ones you are, um, then you see your strengths and you're able to see like, oh, and these are potential weaknesses that I have. So it's, mm -hmm. it's something that works in group formats. It's something that works in individual formats. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And it's really fun. I can sense that. <laughs> it's hey, pretty cool. Hey. Of course. Yeah, it's really awesome. Okay. That's good that you have systemized it. Actually, uh, that brought me to an interesting point. Uh, uh, just a couple of uh, hours ago, we were doing a group coaching session and there was a person we were talking about doing conversations, DM conversations and booking call, closing people and all. Yeah. And I found this similar thing, what we are just talking about. And I'm like, you are just trying to copy my style or someone else's style yeah. on the sales call or talking to people. And oh. then you're feeling disconnected with your audience and they're not feeling that you are your true self over there. And that's okay. what the major epiphany that we had is like, I asked her to create a new script and all that stuff. I was like, yeah. start from brand, like who you are, what do you stand for? And I think that's oh, a similar okay. concept. 100%. Yeah. With, mm -hmm. uh, within different communities with different leaders, the interesting thing is, uh, so there are very specific reasons why people get out of their styles. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that they have mentors. We call it their woo face, but they have a mentor <laughs> who they think like, woo, like they are better than I am. So I should try to be like them. Right. right. Uh, especially because modeling works so well in like different aspects of business. So all of your students are trying to model you when mm -hmm. they should, they should model the tactics, but the delivery of it needs to be different if they're different styles than you. Same thing happens in the ClickFunnels community with Russell. People think like, oh, Russell is high energy. So if I want to be high energy, I should model Russell. When if they're nothing like Russell, it just makes them look really awkward. Yeah. Uh, same thing, yeah, in any community that you go into, right? Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, um, you know, even some of my other friends in the ClickFunnels community, it's 
the people are trying to copy their mentor, which in every other instance works out really well for them. But mm -hmm. in the delivery part of it, it just looks like they're trying to imitate them, which like you said, it, it yeah. makes them look like they're not themselves at all. Yeah, it looks like more of fake it or you're trying oh. to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's not right. And yeah. when we're talking about this modeling concept, uh, another follow-up question coming in my mind is like, we always le learn these things model. Russell also talks about model what is already successful. Yeah. My question to you is, you started this charisma hacking and, and now I'm not sure. Was somebody else already doing this before or how did you? Doing charisma yeah. hacking? Yeah. No, I am a weirdo. <laughs> I... No. So, so the name charisma hacking, uh, you know, like I said, I was, I walked into funnel hacking live. I was not an entrepreneur. I was not a business owner. I had never even heard of click funnels, except Catherine's like, I'm speaking at this event. And the first day, you know, I listened to, uh, Russell talk about, talk about, um, you know, funnel hacking. And then like Steve Larson had mentioned offer hacking and Catherine was like design hacking. And I was like, I know what my thing is. It's charisma hacking. <laughs> so like the name of it uh, comes from that, but it, it was something that I've really done since I was a little girl of like looking at something and saying what makes it work, but, but not just anything. It was charisma specifically. So I was on the program, like shared the same stages with people who were incredible incredibly successful and amazing, um, you know, world renowned performers. And I would look at them and say like, okay, what, why are people clapping for them? Like, what are they doing? And mm -hmm. it wasn't just like this overall air of things, but I spent a lot of time around them. So I would break things down like that. And then when I taught voice lessons and performance lessons and things like that, um, you know, I would break things down just in really minuscule ways. I don't, I, I'm not a huge fan of words like authenticity or words like, uh, or phrases like be yourself or be confident because they feel too abstract. Um, yes. And the follow up question always is like, well, how do I do that? You know, if somebody says like, how am I supposed to be authentic? And they're like, well, you got to be confident. And they're like, well, how am I supposed to be confident? And they're like, well, you got to be yourself. And they're like, okay, well, how am I supposed to be myself? And they're like, well, you got to be authentic, right? It just kind of like goes around and around in right, circles. Right. Uh, when instead we say like, oh, if we know what yourself looks like, Mm -hmm. um, then we know what to lean into in order to be more confident, right? And if we know mm -hmm. what uh, authentically you sounds like and looks like and feels like in the language that you use, you know, when you're with your favorite person, then we can actually lean into that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was something that I had always broken down like in different scenarios and different instances. And then entrepreneurs are so smart that they ask really great questions. So as soon as I started coaching entrepreneurs, they every single framework that I've created has been created with, with a person, right. On a coaching yeah. call, because they didn't understand something or, you know, on a group coaching call because of a question that somebody asked and, you know, yeah. or something wasn't working. So we had to adjust. So just the questions and everything mixed with my analytical brain of like, Oh, we got to break down exactly what this means. Um, yeah, it, it created this awesome framework. And then the data, my husband and all of that. You bro broke it down. So, so well, I remember uh, you being on the stage at FHL that, that I was literally thinking in mind, what she's going to teach on charisma hacking is like that same. She's going to be more confident and, you know, do this. But totally. when you brought all this presentation and broke down each thing, I was like, wow, there is a framework to it even, which yeah. nobody even thinks about it. Totally. That's a great job that you have done over there. Dang. That shows your, you know, the passion towards it. Also the efforts that you have put in to make it happen. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's been, it feels like my life's work, <laughs> you know, it feels like my life's work. And the cool thing about it is because it's all based in data, it gets smarter every day. Right. Like, yeah. uh, you know, every time, every time I train on something, there are more, it's, it's clearer in some way because of questions that people asked and, you know, mm -hmm. adjusting to things that way. So it's, it's evolving very quickly. And yeah, like I said, it gets, it gets better and more in depth every day. And we also get more data points, right? More people right. who are the same style who I say, oh yeah, that phrase is also really good for those people to use in that style, just because the more mm -hmm. people that use it, then the smarter the framework gets and, yeah, it's been really fun. I really like adjusting it. It's been great. So awesome. I, uh, hey. I really love that thing. So according to you, uh, McCall, uh, when you have been on stages, you have seen other people on the stages and all that, yeah. what, uh, I want to know from my own pers personal perspective as well, because I know I had a lot of stuttering issues speaking on camera like mm. i was really bad at it i don't know how i'm doing even these podcast things to be honest i have no <laughs> idea how i'm doing it <laughs> thank you so what causes these anxiety or fear on stages you have broke it down well i, I might have a very general or vague answer or to this but i want to hear from you what actually okay. caused this anxiety and stress when we are going to the stages like this yeah great question so um 
so what happens, right? So if we break it down into like the terms of my framework, right? When you are yourself, you're in your charisma styles. When you are not yourself, you're in what, are, what we call false faces, which is basically you trying to be something else. And there's only three things that cause that, that cause you to not be yourself. Uh, and these are also things that cause fear. And I'll go into more depth. But the first one is called your two face, T-O-O. And what basically happens is that somebody in your life, yourself included, has told you that you're too much something, right? For me, it was like, you're too bubbly and you're too silly and you're too goofy. Uh, for other people, it's like, oh, you're too passionate. You're too direct. You're too strong, right? You're too serious. You're too uh, lighthearted, whatever it may be. Um, these things happen. And in our brains, you know, the survival part of our brain says, I don't like that feeling. Like, I want to prove this person wrong. So instead of being yourself on camera or when you get in front of people, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, well, I'm not too silly and too bubbly. So I'm going to be more serious on this podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, you become something that you're not, or like, Oh, well they say I'm too serious. So I'm going to try to be uh, more jokey than I ever have been on this podcast. Right. So that's, that's the first one, which is your two face, right? You are uh, afraid that you're too much something. The second one is called your ooh face, which is the one we talked about where uh, when you have a mentor or somebody that you see, you say, well, people like them more than they like me. So if I was more like them, then people would like me more, right? It's, mm -hmm. I, sometimes I call them mentor blocks, right? You're saying, I'm gonna impersonate this person because I think that I will succeed more. And then mm -hmm. the last one's called your EW face, E-W. And it's you looking at something and you say, I don't wanna be seen as blank. And so I'm gonna adjust accordingly, right? It may be like, mm -hmm. I don't wanna be seen like my mom or like, I don't wanna be seen like this person or I don't wanna be seen as mean. So I'm gonna really soften. I don't wanna be seen as salesy. So I'm gonna totally back off. Right. There's just these different things in our brain where, you know, I would say overall it's the fear of rejection, but like how those things look mm. differently, uh, just, yeah, it just makes you not yourself. It makes you, uh, adjust based on the person that's in front of you too. Beautiful, beautiful explain. Have you cracked out any three solutions for these as well? Three hacks? Totally. Or... Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk I mean, about it. Yeah, for sure. There's, um, I wish I had my whiteboard. So, <laughs> when when we get off center so like if your christmas styles are your center and who you are right and when you're not being yourself you're off center mm. right there are things that cause it that we just talked about called triggers now there's two different ways that you can get back to the center or back to who you actually are uh the first one we call anti-triggers right which is subtraction we're trying to say if somebody once told you that you're too much then you need to go find five people who celebrated that in you right so that you have mm. evidence to fight that Right. So it's like, oh, well, this person actually loves how much I am or like, oh, this person said I was too silly. All these people actually really loved that I was silly. Right. Because it weakens that trigger and mm -hmm. uh, it gets in your brain of saying like, oh, yeah, we're going to balance this out. And I'm not too much that. Then the other one is uh, what we call bridges, which is back by addition. So you get back to the center mm -hmm. either by subtracting the trigger or by adding things that enhance that center. So, um, you know, with entertainment, if you want to be more entertaining, we add something called true conviction, right? And we break it down and we say, oh, okay, well, we need to talk about things that you're more excited about, right? Or we need to talk about things that you're trying to protect your people from. And you can learn more about like your styles and people to model and things like that. You know, with authority, we're talking about more what we call absolute truth. So you're breaking down, um, you know, experiences that you've had that prove that you know what you're talking about, things like that, right? So we we get triggered, we get off center, and then we say, okay, well, how do we get back, right? We either mm -hmm. say, well, I'm not too much, right? And I have evidence of that. Or we say, what are things that make me more myself? Hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, it does. That's Thanks for this coaching. <laughs> I yes, really love I love that. it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> that, that's fun, exactly. <laughs> cool. I want to move to that uh, as you are going to FHL. So congratulations once again for that Thank second you. time FHL That's speaker. So it's it's a pleasure and honor to know you, actually. I would say that. As... You're so nice. Thank you. Pleasure to know you as well. You're killing it. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. What does McCall prepare? I want to go to that point. Get, how does she get ready for to speak at these big stages, especially FHL? Because I've seen you oh, over there. So. Yeah, great question. How the backstage? Uh, I'm more interested to know that. New yeah, to know how you prepare for the big stage. Uh, so I've spoken on a lot of different stages. And I would say um, the main thing is the preparation. I think that any speaker who is invited to speak on a stage that's not their own, it's a total honor to be there, right? Whether it's FHL, which I'm so excited about, or something else. And the preparation that you show is, or the preparation that you put into it is just a respectful thing to do for 
the host and it helps, you know, anxiety and things like that. So uh, knowing how you fit into the event and making sure you stick to how you fit into the event, right? Uh, for me, you know, Charisma Styles is what I'm speaking on, which I'm so excited. It fits into Russell's attractive character section. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that, right? If I were to go rogue and be like, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about, right? It wouldn't fit what I've been asked to do. Uh, so it's making sure that I am prepared in a very specific way of saying like, okay, I'm here to teach about a specific thing to move a specific objective forward for Russell, right? And any stage yeah. you do. So it's doing your research and saying, how do I fit in? And then uh, preparing your speech. Um, it's a lot of practice, right? Like before I go out on stage, sometimes I'm running my speech backstage, right? Regardless of how many stages I've been on or how long the speech is or whatever, uh, that preparation is something that that helps. I also use a lot of slides. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't memorize anything because memorization causes anxiety. So I use slides to kind of prompt what comes next, which is really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And then backstage, right? So all of that is leading up to the speech. Do your research, make sure you prepare, mm -hmm. practice in front of people. Uh, another thing that I really believe in is practicing being nervous. Uh, if you're nervous being on stage, you need to have felt that feeling of nerves before you get there. So ways that you can do that is you can practice that same speech in front of different crowds, right? You can invite mm -hmm. your family over and do it in your living room. Uh, you can do Zoom calls with clients or different people and practice your speech there. Uh, you can do virtual events and practice your speech there, but making sure you're practicing that speech in a way where you're like, okay, I have felt what nervous feels like. I know I'm going to be okay. Right. And I practice what happens that way. And then before you get on stage, we just do uh, something called a warm open. And basically mm -hmm. what a warm open is, is you get backstage and you get to the energy level that you need to be on stage and you talk out loud and you talk about how you're going to serve these people before, uh, before you even get on stage. And then once you're out on stage, you're actually already warmed up. So it's not like you're sitting backstage like this and then you get on stage and right. <laughs> expect something magical to happen. Um, you know, I always told my voice lesson students, nothing magical happens from a crowd. And a lot of times yeah. people be like, no, you don't know. Like once, once the crowd starts yelling, like something magical happens. But if you haven't practiced in the way that you want to show up, nothing, no switch will flip, right? No switch will flip. Mm -hmm. It's important to practice per performing exactly the way that you want to show up. Beautifully explained. I remember I saw your video even when I think Russell reached you, reached you out at the first FHL and you recorded the video on YouTube. I think it's there. I saw that. Totally. Yeah. Did you do something totally. weird to prepare for that? It was your first time on the FHL stage. Did you do something unique or something you, you call your family? Yeah, yeah. Well, first time to second time. So Funnel Hacking Live 2020 was the first time that I had, or 2021, first time I spoke, uh, was the first time I had spoken on a live stage before. So before that, like I had done virtual stages, but I started my business in like right as COVID happened. So like the world shut down and I had sang on lots of stages and like introduced songs and stuff, but I'd never given a speech before. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of prepping the same way that I would you know, to sing in an event. It was just a ton of practice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a ton of practice. And I also did what I called a whittle crew. <laughs> and it was basically like to help me whittle down my speech. Um, and I messaged, I mean, I think there were like 40 people in this in this crew. And like at first, I, I, at Funnel Hockey Live, you only get 27 minutes on stage yeah. and you have to make sure that you stay within your time frame. And at first my speech was like two hours long because I was like, I want to make sure I'm fitting all these things in. So I would do it for this group of people. And then I would ask them for their biggest takeaways and I would ask them for what resonated the most. And then I would mm -hmm. cut things down and then I do it for another group of people. And the same thing, I'd say, what were the biggest takeaways? And you know, what did you learn here? Did you understand this? And then I'd cut it down again so that by the time I got mm -hmm. to Funnel Hacking Live, like I took a two hour speech down to 27 minutes. In fact, it was like 23 to give myself like more room yeah, yeah. just in case I wanted to like talk to the crowd <laughs> or something. So that was what I did the first time. This time we have a lot of virtual events coming up um, that I'll do like portions of my Funnel Hacking Live speech there. Uh, mm. And then, yeah, I mean, same kind of process, same kind of process. I, mm. I'll practice it for people. And yeah, I, I'll probably send it to Russell just because of where it is like in the in the program of, of Funnel Hacking Live yeah, uh, yeah. and see if he wants me to change anything. And then, yeah. And then obviously get a hot pink power suit. To wear <laughs> I love that. Power, And then, yeah, it'll be so fun. That was amazing. That stood you out from the whole crowd. And every time where is my call right there in the pink. In the power suit <laughs> right there. You yep. can't miss it. Yeah. It's so amazing. Is there anything uh, that uh, McCall that you have maybe uh, it, 
um, you, like you started this thing charisma hacking and you got clients you served so many uh, thing so many people right now what is the one thing that you think your program did for your client that you didn't expect um i think it's really interesting charisma in general is such an emotional thing that i think people don't expect uh people find like who they are and things they actually care about and they're able to bring that out uh in a really easy way which is crazy um you know the business stuff at, at the beginning was was really surprising to me because i i knew i knew that they looked better on video but when they were you know tripling their revenue and increasing their conversion rate by 300% like it it was amazing to see the power of charisma without mm-hmm. trying to have that be the original objective and now we know like oh okay we can make these tweaks and these numbers will happen um but honestly the the internal transformations for people uh to say like i don't have to pretend to be something i'm not has been so magical has been so magical and it's been very empowering for people and it's allowed them to you know not only make more money or be seen by more people but kind of accept who they are which has been which has been really mm-hmm. cool so amazing thanks that's, that's cool for our listeners who are watching like what's the one piece of advice you want to give to the people i know you have limited time now we're going to wrap this up what oh, is the one piece of advice you want to give to the people and if they want more information where they can find you online or what is the best resource they can go to Yes. So first, go to charismahacking.com. We're doing a ton of free events. Uh we've realized that this information is something that every single person in the world needs, so we're trying to make it as accessible as possible. So charismahacking.com, you can sign up for one of our free events and come and learn about yourself. Um totally do that. That would be so awesome. And then the I think there's so much power in self-awareness, and I think that people are really afraid to admit when something isn't working, right? Mm-hmm. And they think that they're just going to power through it. A lot of times when people get on video, they think the only way that they can get better is to do more of it, which mm-hmm. is it it's good advice if you don't have the secret to not having to just do more of it, right? Because people didn't okay. know how to make people themselves really quickly. So it's like doing more of it, you know, can eventually trial and error maybe get their way there. um but when you're really self-aware when you just have the steps and you just have the tools and you could admit like oh i'm not being myself on video maybe i should do something about this um mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of power to that there's a lot of power to that i love that awareness part of it how you did it yeah, yeah. thanks cool thanks. that's amazing well, i'm going to put the uh, link under the show notes down there people who are watching or listening to us Great. again thank you so much mikal for coming on sharing yes. this gold nugget it was again a pleasure to have you here on the show we'll be thank coming up after fhl we're going to do another episode this yes, is your time so excited it'll be so fun <laughs> absolutely thank you so much once again mikal and people who are listening to us will be coming up with another episode very soon till then stay tuned take care bye everyone